Well, welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. This is part two. Uh, I tried part one experimentally just to see how it went and uh, it's been a great success. And I first, first of all want to thank everybody for your tremendously encouraging comments and likes and subscribes and things like that. It's been off the chart. I'm really, really uh, encouraged. So here we are at part two. Uh, it, it was quite interesting because this hasn't really gone the way I expected it would. I was hoping to sort of chart different cars in each video, but we've had so much interest and so much attention around one car, one project, that I've decided to exclusively feature that in the second video. And that's this car, the 1969 Lamborghini Miura S, one that sold some weeks ago at auction. Uh, the outstanding feature of this car is it's almost one owner from new, and it's done 27 odd thousand kilometers, 28,000. Uh, in fact, it has done 29,020 kilometers to be precise. Uh, so we've got to grips with this job. We've really stripped it down. Uh, last time uh, we videoed this, it was a complete car. It's obviously very much not that now. But there are some interesting things about this car. Uh, this is all factory original as we would expect. The, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about how Lamborghini actually built this car. Um, it was a very minimalist car. So in other words, there was no excess weight. Uh, they went for the clever option rather than the heavy option. Um, and I had the pleasure of meeting Gian Paolo Dallara uh, some years ago in 2015 when I was authenticating the Italian job Miura, the one from the movie. And he invited me to his works in um, Parma in Italy and I actually took the car there and he explained to me firsthand how he designed this frame for this car. It's quite an unusual technique. Um, a lot of cars of this period would have been done on, um, they either would have used space frames or um, which is a sort of set of tubes that are welded together or they'd have used quite exotic pressed panels. But Lamborghini had no idea how many of these they were going to make. So they did it all on a very ad hoc basis. And Delara designed this almost with one hand up his back because he had no idea, none of them knew that they were going to sell 760 of them, depending on your interpretation of the production figures. So what he did was made it up out of steel foldings and steel pressings, which are very easy to do on very fairly rudimentary tooling. So um, round here, you've got weld marks. Um, these are all plates that are simply folded or pressed together, uh, pressed on a machine, and then they're welded together into a sort of box section here. And um, super cheap to do, but super effective. Uh, the, these little holes here are um, to add lightness to it. And basically what you do is drill holes in them and you use what's called a fly press to make these indentations, which actually strengthen the sheet metal. Um, so this is a very elegant, very clever, um, I mean, he was, I think, 23 when he designed this Mura chassis, uh, Gian Paolo Dallara. Just an incredibly clever guy. There were three guys at Lamborghini who developed this car. Him, a New Zealander called Bob Wallace, and Paolo Stanzani, who unfortunately isn't with us anymore. Uh, but they were all in their early 20s and they just went completely bonkers. They went absolutely mad with the design of this car. And it didn't change that much throughout its production run. They got a lot of it right first time. He specified a uh, material of 0.9 millimeters thick for the chassis, Gian Paolo Dallara. Uh, it very quickly became apparent that the things sort of could had a tendency to almost twist flex. Um, so he uprated that to one millimeter after the first 125 were built. And the sort of the framework, because the front is, is the same as this, the same sort of construction. The framework is, um, is fit for purpose, but only just in a way, really. And Lamborghini tried over the years to strengthen them. They completely altered the back suspension um, and uh, things like that to, to just sort of try and raise the bar and keep it high with the, uh, the way the cars drove and performed. So um, the paintwork on the car, we've obviously removed the front and rear clamshells. The paintwork on the car is this centre section. I've been round it with a paint depth gauge, as it's called, which uh, 
tells you if there's any metal underneath or aluminium, and it tells you how deep the whole finish is from that particular substance. So the paint depth here is 550 microns-ish, which is about right for a car of this era with factory original paint. Modern cars are much thinner, as, as with everything, manufacturers want to save costs. So nowadays a modern car will sort of have a maximum of 180 microns of paint from the factory. This is a say over 500. And what they used to do, the artisans in Italy and all the other sort of specialist car makers in the 1960s, they would spray them with primer, then they would start adding the top coats, the color, they would hand rub it back, then they would spray it again, then they would hand rub it back. And the likes of Rolls Royce would do that up to 14 times with final finish, just to get a really smooth, super paint finish. Um, this paint is the original, there's no doubt about it. Most of it's lovely, but um, there are some areas of imperfection, corrosion, things coming through from the back, deterioration, that sort of thing. So we're having to make a decision as to where we go with this. Uh, round the front end, there's, somebody's actually blown in, as it's called, round the, the base of the windscreen. There's been a minor knock or something's dropped on it or whatever at some stage, probably early in the car's life, looking at the paint on it. Um, so again, we're faced with the challenge. That's non-original and it's slightly off color. What do we do with it? So these are the type of things that we have to sort of come to terms with as restorers. I'm very much for the preservation side of things, but it's not always possible, particularly when you're trying to finish up with something of a very high standard. So I'll uh, just show you a couple of other details now, and um, there we are. So one of the things I touched on in part one was what the condition of the engine was like inside. Uh, and this can be a really big problem or not, as the case may be. Uh, so what we did was, this is the engine as it sits in the car. Uh, this is the differential, as it's called, where the power comes out of the, the power unit through drive shafts to the back wheels here. This is the gearbox here. Uh, all the gear, the gear cluster is in here. Um, gear change comes through the engine from the center console into this distribution box and then works the gearbox inside. And as you can see, here is the engine. The interesting thing about this is uh, the engine gearbox and differential are all one lump of aluminium, one casting. To my knowledge, this is the only car ever made where anybody has dared to do that. Normally they bolt bits on. Uh, because it, life's much easier that way. If you make a machining mistake on one face, you don't write off the whole shooting match. Um, but no, Lamborghini, pah, we can do anything. Uh, and they could. So that's why we have one power unit casting for the whole thing. And the gearbox is built up inside it, the diff's built up inside it, and the engine's built up inside it. Um, so before we took the engine out, we removed this back cylinder head because my big concern was the state of the cooling system inside. I'm delighted to say it's in incredibly good condition. Uh, really, I'm very, very happy with this. Uh, we've got no sort of need to buy a replacement cylinder head or how do, you, how do you replace this block? It's the original matching numbers block. That's the engine number on there. How do you replace it? With great difficulty. Uh, so all this can go again. The cylinder heads can be reused. The block can be reused. What a delightful result, really. So this is how the engine sits in the car, as I say. The, um, you can see the, the rear brakes there and the rear suspension. So the engine actually is really shoehorned into the frame uh, because the differential actually pokes out underneath in the, in the hole underneath the, uh, the rear chassis frame there. To remove the engine and gearbox and to refit it is quite a tricky operation because there's it's as snug as a bug in a rug in there really and uh, there's millimeters to spare either side when you're taking this engine out and it does weigh a quarter of a ton so it's tricky so it, when when the engine is removed it has to be slowly lifted but also swung through 90 degrees so this is pointing straight down and you sort of rotate the engine out of the car uh, quite tricky, but um, not, not insurmountable. So um, yeah, 
I'll show you a couple of other bits now. So one of the joys of a job like this, as I keep mentioning, is the absolutely staggering originality of this car. Uh, this is something that is never seen on mirrors. This is a, a thin piece of plastic membrane which is stuck to the door, which almost all cars built have got. It goes behind the door trim to stop it getting damp as water drains down from the window and it sort of contaminates the carpet or whatever's on the door potentially. But to see this, this is the original plastic door cover from 1969. Uh, and it's, it's beautifully stuck round. You can see the little holes there, which have been made for the armrest. That one there for the door handle. Um, this is a real find. You never see this on 50-year-old cars. So what this means is, this car's been driven with the limited miles that it has, and everything inside this door has not required attention in 50 years. The window mecha the electric window mechanism, the door lock, which is quite delicate on yours. It's quite a complex mechanism because it's hidden in this part here with the vents and things. Um, all of it's been behaving perfectly for 50 years. And the other door's exactly the same. This is uh, really, really unusual. So this is Craig. Hi. Craig the trimmer. <laughs> yes. Uh, and yeah, so these are the original carpets out the car, aren't they? Yes and uh, you've managed to get the whole lot out intact, basically. Yes, um, yeah, it was hard work, <laughs> but they're, they're all intact, original carpets, yes. So they, they've obviously been glued in from new. Yeah. So this glue is, I mean, everything you're looking at is 50 years old, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, yeah. But they, um, I mean, I can't believe you, because normally the, 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 they stick, don't they, to yes. the, the yeah. floor? Yes, well, yeah, you have to go, it's a slow process to try and get them out because as soon as, as, soon as it, it tears the fibres out, you're left with a, just a, a, an empty net on one side yeah. and the fibres of the carpet stuck to the body of the car. Sure. And there's nothing, nothing worse no, than no. Yeah. missing piles. Yes, yeah, I know. As it were. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so this is the original profile of rubber heel mat, isn't it? Yeah. So this was, this, the pedals are here. Yes. Um, and you reckon something's been going on here, don't you, basically? Yeah, it's perished at the edge and then someone's had to go hand sewing it on so it doesn't <clears throat> ride up any further. Now what we can do, we can take it up a couple of notches and then we can do another line of sewing there so, it's, so it'll look like brand new again, really. It'll have that kind of edge right. on it there. Yeah. This one so, here? Yes, yeah. Yeah, this is a passenger side. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean... Oh. This stuff's yeah. so fragile and so, for it to last this length of time, it's yes, incredible, it may, yeah. incredible. Um, okay, and you think the substrate's okay, the carpet yes, underneath? Yes, yeah, no, it'll be fine. Once we've cleaned it up, give it a bit of steam, it'll, it, 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 it'll look nothing like that. Yeah, That's wonderful. It's tatty. That's yes, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, it really is. So. Okay, that's that taken care of. And, and even these bits that you can't see are all... Oh, yeah, they're in really good condition, um, considering. I mean, there's, yeah. Yes, yeah. There's nothing we can do about slight fading under UV light. No. But, you know, it's, um, it's, it's patina. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is one out of another Mura yes. that we did a while back. And somebody's used... Is that, is that a sort of generic... Yeah, it's still a bit of a bog-standard rubber. Um, you know, it's just a version of the original, really, um, that they've had a go at. So um, we get a lot of these in, don't we, <laughs> really? Yes, yeah. Uh, so that's great. So we, we ditched that. Um, and this is quite interesting. You managed to dig out a couple of bits here. Uh, they, these aren't from this car, but sometimes we're in the, faced with the difficult situation where somebody insists they want a car retrimmed. Yes, I know. And yeah. That's unfortunately what happened with this one. Yes. This is the original, I mentioned in the first video about the original vinyl being used in the interior. Um, this is actually an original covering of a centre console. There's um, where the armrest is, that's for the gear lever, that's the ignition switch, uh, etc. And this is original vinyl used by Bertoni in sort of 1968, 1969. So what we've done is carefully unstuck this and we can, we can actually, if somebody really, really wants us to, 
we can use that again. Well, we could, yeah, that's in good nick, really. Um, and also trying to match this kind of vinyl it's with anything. Impossible. Well, it's, you know. It did start life as, as almost black, but it does go it, this sort of browny beige yes, colour. Yes, it does, yeah, yeah. Um, and this bit here is the same. This is out of a mirror without air conditioning because it's got the glove box yes, where the, yeah. it, go, it sort of sits under the dashboard yes, like yeah, that yeah. Uh, on the passenger side and the air conditioning unit would hide behind that yes, if yeah, it had yeah, it. Yeah. Very few mirrors actually had factory fitted air conditioning. Wow, so we can reuse that as well. Yes, if need be, yes. If, yeah. Yeah. Well, you never know one day. <laughs> um, these things are only original ones. So that's great. So um, if we just remove a couple of these bits carefully, I'll bring a seat up and have a little look at it. Yeah, so, um, so this is a seat out of the yellow Mura, and um, when these were new, you could have one or two types of interior. Most of it was the same, apart from the actual seat facings. Uh, this is vinyl with, um, what would you describe that as, a sort of velour? Yes, yeah, it's, um, but again, it's in really good condition, oh, considering. It's it's yeah, it still, is. It doesn't even feel that no, warm. No, I know, yeah. Uh, so this is going to, we're not even going to touch this, we're just going to carefully clean it, um, make sure it's all lovely, and leave well alone. I mean, it, it's, because quite often sort of buttons on jeans and yes, things like that, yeah. they can scratch these yeah, as people yeah. get in and out. Yeah. Sort of bucket seat, it's not as contoured down here yes, as normal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's, it's just phenomenal to see that in such good nick. It's like a time capsule, isn't it? it? Is. Yeah, the whole car is like yeah. a time capsule. Yeah, and we, the last thing we want to do is do anything. Yeah, erase any kind of character from the, from the car. So that's all good. So, I mean, um, I take my hat off to you, really, for getting uh, everything out in one fell swoop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, yeah. No, I know, yeah. Uh, that's great. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. So another element that distinguishes this car really is something else that's largely unseen. Uh, this is the exhaust system off the Mura. It's quite a, a complicated bit of kit when you've got a mid-mounted V12. But um, <laughs> what's really interesting about this is, first of all, it's made of mild steel uh, because Classic car exhausts these days have normally long since rotted away, the originals, and they may be on their third or fourth mild steel exhaust. But of course, people go for stainless steel these days, which lasts indefinitely. Um, and the mild steel systems have really long since disappeared. There's a couple of companies starting to make them now for people who are super fussy about originality. Um, but this is something special. This is an original mild steel system off a Mura from the factory. And it's still in, in really good condition. Um, unfortunately, we can't say what it's like inside, and it could well be if we started this engine and drove it in anger, the exhaust system could start to fall apart, but it's just a lovely period piece. Uh, you never see this now, and it's even got the original ANSA stickers on it uh, from new. So I'm guessing this exhaust system was probably the second one that's been fitted on the car. And it's, if it's an original ANSA system, I'm guessing sort of mid 1980s, I could still get ANSA systems for Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Maseratis in the late 80s. But the supply dried up because people started fitting stainless systems. So this is potentially 30, 40 years old. Um, how fabulous. They lasted no time, these things, in period, a year or two, because they just get water in the exhaust system, condensation from the engine, and they just rot from the inside out. Just absolutely glorious to see that. So that concludes the second Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you to all those people who've supported the first one. And um, if you do like it, subscribe, and I'll be back with another one soon.